meteorologist Garrett Lewis was tracking these deadly storms as they swept across the country. This is some unusual weather, Garrett. What is what's causing all this? Well, a lot of it has to do with the wind shear in the atmosphere. Now, the Storm Prediction Center issued a high risk today. It's unusual. They only do it about two or three times a year. They actually did it yesterday, so we knew there was going to be a big outbreak today across the south and to the southeast. And personally watching these storms, I haven't seen an outbreak of this magnitude since about May 3rd, 1999 in central Oklahoma. This was the area that was under the high risk inside this area earlier today. It was shifted a little farther to the west. Take a look at this video from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This large tornado on the ground for um, up to a mile wide as it moved into Birmingham. And what's interesting too is you can see the little tubes rotating in to the storm from the side. I'm not sure if we have any sound on this. May take a listen. The gentleman uh, shooting this, obviously, um, I mean, can you imagine just seeing something like, something like this? This isn't a typical small funnel. Only 2% of tornadoes ever actually reach this magnitude. A very strong, very powerful, violent tornado that moved into Alabama. This was the early stages when it moved near the University of Alabama campus. It actually grew in size to about a mile wide, and that's typically when the whole wall cloud actually makes its way uh, down to the surface and sits on the ground. You're looking at a tornado of at least an EF3, possibly EF4. Um, it's not out of the realm of possibility. They find EF5 damage. Um, in Alabama from this powerful supercell storm which developed earlier today. Now, a storm that was EF2 earlier this week hit Valonia, Arkansas. This video just coming in to us, new video, uh, security camera video from a grocery store showing the Valonia tornado um, making its way through a parking lot there, and it happened late in the evening. This storm was rated an EF2 storm. Uh, winds estimated to be around 120 miles an hour or so, and you can see plenty of debris flying as that tornado moved through. Very, very scary. What caused all this has a lot to do with wind shear in the atmosphere. Strong low-level winds, strong winds aloft. Wind shear, even though it's kind of a weird-looking term, all it is is a change in speed and direction with height in the atmosphere. And when you have different speeds and directions through height, you end up with almost a little tube which rotates down towards the surface. Now that tube of air gets pushed up into the atmosphere by an updraft and so you end up with this rotating column of air in the middle of the storm. But that in its of itself won't cause a tornado. What you would have to do is see that deep persistent rotation in the middle of the thunderstorm. We call it a mesocyclone in the middle of the storm. And if there's enough low level shear, enough turning with height down towards the surface, which today the numbers were just off the charts in Alabama, you get the middle level rotation, you bring it all the way down to the surface and that's what causes tornadoes to Develop, like what we saw in Alabama and unfortunately like what we've seen here in Arkansas over the last couple of weeks. Well, shifting gears, what can we expect locally? This whole pattern eventually changes. In fact, it ended today. As we move through the next day or so, we'll see sunshine for a break. It'll be nice to see the sun. More rain coming in Saturday night and then in the seven day forecast, I think you'll like this more sunshine than rain. As we look at the satellite and radar, the sky is actually starting to clear out from west to east. Now we would see a lot of fog tonight because of all that low level moisture. But likely with these northwest winds, unless they go calm, we're not going to see the fog. Next couple nights, though, watch out. There could be some foggy conditions. 46 in Fayetteville, 48 degrees in Springdale. It's 45 in Rogers. That's chilly. When I had dinner this evening, I actually ended up turning on the heater in the car, which is a first for me, especially heading towards the end of April. It's going to be a cool night with lows tonight in the upper 30s and low 40s. It's 50 in Fort Smith, 55 in Poto. There are those winds out there out of the west we we're talking about. A little bit of calm winds in Tahlequah and Salisaw. Would not be surprised to see some patchy, dense fog develop by sunrise. Out across the south central plains, the cold air mass plowing into the warm air mass. There you go, the showers and storms all across the uh, central and southeast part of the United States. Futurecast shows this system moving off to the east on water vapor imagery and the jet stream map takes this system to the east but also brings us a big break and that big break comes in the way of sunshine for the next two days in northwest arkansas we're looking at 70s with overnight lows in the 40s now saturday night really overnight into sunday morning i do expect to see more showers and thunderstorms with temperatures falling back down in the 60s some of those could be severe it doesn't look to be the magnitude of what we just saw in fort smith in the river valley mid and upper 70s to near 80 then falling into the 60s showers and thunderstorms become likely saturday night into sunday it's not a whole lot of time to dry out you could see a little bit more flash flooding saturday night but I don't think we'll see the extent of the flash flooding, which we just saw. Yeah, the severe weather has almost become normal to us, Garrett. It seems so. like it has. It's, you know, we started this whole thing with that tornado in Poto. That seems like it was five months ago, and it was <laughs> it just does. last week. Yeah. Wow. I cannot wait for some sun.